The essence of the safe working cycle is to standardize safety procedures and to ensure that they are carried out regularly and systematically. The safe working cycle consists of daily, weekly and monthly cycles, including brief reports on follow-up issues, group discussion on potential hazards, regular inspection and supervision, and monitoring corrective action and work progress. The systematic safe working cycle is in fact a very handy tool to reduce accidents by following certain procedures and implementing timely corrective action. The daily safe working cycle includes eight items. They are the morning safety meeting, hazard identification exercises, prior to work inspection, guidance and supervision at work, safety inspection, process safety discussion, tidying up after work, and the final checkup after work. And that's it. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Kung. Yes. I have a question. These days we have to go to morning exercise and a meeting before we start. Why? Well, the company's implementing the safe working cycle. Working cycle? That kind of stuff is for senior management. We're just workers. What can we do? Well, not exactly. Protecting oneself is everyone's responsibility. Site safety requires everyone's cooperation. That's right, Ming. Do you remember last year I stepped on a nail on the fourth floor? That put me out of work for two weeks. You know, as a worker, no work means no income. It's disastrous. I know, but you should have worn your safety shoes. Ah! Bah! It's not just that. If Chun had cleared away the wooden boards, Ty probably wouldn't have been injured at all. Okay, back to work. Oh, by the way, I was just wondering, what's the deal with all these morning exercises? Even horses need exercise. Exercises help us stretch so we can react quickly. Mmm, we won't get hurt so easily if we happen to fall over. Yeah, smart guy. Let's get back to work. At the morning safety meeting, the site agent will speak to all the workers, announce important matters such as work progress and special activities like tests and examinations, visits, and remind... The aim of hazard identification exercises is to inform the workers of potential hazards and safety measures necessary to prevent such hazards. The foreman in charge with their team members will participate in hazard identification. Each foreman must inform his members of the principal contractor's conclusions from the process safety discussion the day before and lay out working procedures for the day. During the site inspection yesterday, the site agent found some workers burning newspaper. The mosquitoes are really bad. We've got to do something. But that's wrong. If you burn newspaper, the material around you could easily catch fire. If he catches us, we have to pay a fine. Remember, don't do that again. He's had the area sprayed with pesticide, and the drains have been cleared. If you have any problems, call me, or you can call the foreman, understand? Okay. Our job today is to carry out routine inspection. Ty, take this area. Okay. Ming, you there. Right. You too, down there. Right. Right. Let's get to work. Hey, right. wait. Can you tell me what the hazards are of working up there? Well, the worst thing is falling. What safety measures should you take? Ah, uh, use the safety harness correctly. Hmm. And you? Uh, sometimes we can be hit by falling objects. Hmm. 
So we have to be on the lookout for people working above us or anything that can fall down. The most important thing is to wear a safety helmet. So follow the safety measures. I'll check on you later. Mm -hmm. Before you start, take a look at the posters and check your protective equipment. Understand? Yeah. Then let's go. After assigning the work to be done for the day, the foreman will ask his team members to identify any potential hazards and to suggest corresponding safety measures to reduce the risk. The foreman will record these on the hazard identification exercise and supervision form to ensure that each worker follows the safety measures. The foreman should also pay attention to the physical state of each worker. Team members will be assigned to respective tasks accordingly. The foreman will also spot check his team members' clothing so as to avoid accidents caused by improper dressing. The hazard identification exercise generally takes 5 to 10 minutes and will be done immediately after the morning safety meeting. Now we jot down the potential hazards that we may come across. Thinner is a highly flammable liquid and should be placed in a well-ventilated area. Also remember that the paint is also flammable and should be placed away from naked flames. No smoking is allowed here. The prior to work inspection includes the inspection of all the relevant tools, materials, machinery and equipment to make sure that they are safe for use and have no flaws. As the equipment and tools are used frequently and they will have different levels of wear and tear, the prior to work inspection must be carried out on a daily basis. Workers should check their own tools, such as hand tools, powered tools, flashlights, etc. Staff in charge of the inspection should be assigned by the principal contractor and the subcontractors. Serious prior-to-work inspections greatly reduce the chance of accidents occurring. During work, the responsible foreman should not only monitor work progress, but at the same time pay attention to safety issues. The foreman is the frontline management. The foreman should supervise the workers to ensure that the operation conforms to the safety regulations and company safety rules. That the workers act safely that the temporary structures are properly constructed and maintained and that the mechanical equipment is properly used. These are all likely causes of accidents. The senior management, project manager or site agent should carry out daily safety inspections for the purpose of monitoring work safety. The key findings from the inspection should be recorded on the safety inspection checklist. Priority for inspection should be places and machines that present a greater chance for accidents. In addition, it should also be done to see if work processes have been carried out in accordance with the work plan to stop and reduce unsafe acts and unsafe work procedures. Say, come over here a minute. Say. We have to watch out for work safety. There's an excavator there, so you can't work over there, okay? I'll have to tell your boss about this. This is very dangerous. Reduce risk caused by the improper use of heavy machinery and equipment. Look, they're good, huh? Very effective. Well, they're very good. Well done. Good on you. We make good progress in our safety at work as well as safety knowledge. 
Yeah. Do you remember when we first started working here, there were so many problems? That's right. Now that we've adopted the safe working cycle and come up with an inspection checklist, the whole thing's become systematic. It makes it easier to follow, right? Yep. After the inspection, the process safety discussion will be held. The participants will include the project manager, site agent and subcontractor representatives. Process safety discussion shall emphasize the safety performance of the day. Putting forward and solving any problems found during safety inspection, guidance and supervision, confirming the work progress of that day, and deciding future work sequences. It should also include the coordination of different activities, so as to avoid any conflict that could lead to accidents. Tomorrow we'll clean up the stockpile. At the same time, Chen Qi will deliver bricks, and Ming Fai the glass. It's too much going on at the same time. Oh yeah, I agree. So I asked Ming Fai to come a day later, so we won't be cramped. Oh Chen, do you think your team can clean up the stockpile at the back of the block? No problem. But they're dismantling the scaffolding near there. You tell your team not to work under there. Okay. The process safety discussion will record the main safety issues, names of the people in charge, and completion dates, so that everyone can keep up with any changes. Every day after work, workers should tidy up their own work areas as equipment or work. The general foreman will be responsible for the final check after work. The foreman shall ensure that accidents such as fires, flooding or collapsing scaffolding etc. don't occur after work. Ensure that each item has been checked and then recorded on the checklist. The foreman and subcontractor's representatives should report the results of the tidy-up to the site agent. All urgent follow-up issues shall be solved or controlled immediately and the foreman must report the findings to the site agent. Hey boss. What's up Ken? I've checked. The tower crane's been shut down, everything else ah, is fine. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. The principal contractor and subcontractors should be jointly responsible for the weekly inspection. The weekly inspection will be carried out once a week. The project manager will be in charge and solve problems right on the spot. Concerned parties will also be notified of the corrective measures. The inspection findings should be recorded on the inspection checklist. The principal contractor or subcontractor representatives should inspect essential facilities every week. For example, scaffolding and heavy machinery, so as to ensure that they are in good condition and operationally safe. The weekly process safety discussion should be held regularly by the principal contractor and subcontractors. It will normally be held after the weekly safety inspection. 
Issues relating to the previous week's safety performance will be summarized and safety issues for the coming week should be discussed. Different activities should be discussed and coordinated at the meeting and minuted. The purpose of weekly tidy-ups is to thoroughly tidy up the site so as to create a pleasant working environment and improve work efficiency and safety. Both the principal contractor and subcontractors shall regularly inspect their mechanical equipment. These monthly inspections should be carried out by competent persons appointed by the company. For example, engineers, electricians, mechanics and so on. Safety training should be conducted at least once a month and should use previous accidents as examples. The principal contractor should conduct the training and all subcontractors and workers should take part. The senior site management will first give an introduction to indicate their support and concern. Last Wednesday we had two painters fall from the working platform on the 15th floor of Block B. The cause of the accident was that there were no guardrails on the edge of the working platform. Actually, that wasn't the first time. Lucky for them, they landed right on a pile of sand, or the results would have been fatal. Our company is very concerned about work safety. In a moment, the safety officer will talk about safety rules. So please pay attention. Hmm. Thank you, everybody. The safety officer should then conduct the training. The cause of accidents and any preventive measures can be determined through group discussion. Now for the specifications of the working platform. Now then, before we start our morning safety meeting, I would like to thank you all for your excellent safety performance for this month. And now we have this month's best safety worker. He's Mr. Tong Loy. Mr. Lee, our project manager, will present the prize. Come up here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well done. Keep it up. Yes, I will. <laughs> the main purpose of the monthly safety committee meeting is to report the safety performance of the worksite and to discuss matters relevant to its safety performance. Participants should include representatives from the principal contractor, the subcontractors, the developer's representatives and architect. Difficulties in the implementation of the safe working cycle and suggestions for improvement of the cycle will be discussed. By following these procedures on the chart, the various items of the safe working cycle should keep you on the right track. 